In the following video, I'm going to show you one of the sorting algorithms you need to know in the Decision 1 maths course. In so far as sorting algorithms, uh, we need to be able to tell a computer how to sort things, for example, in ascending order. And there are two algorithms you need to know, the bubble sort and the shuttle sort. And this tutorial will go through the bubble sort for you. Typical question would be sort the numbers 7, 5, 2, 4, 10, 1, 6 and 3 in ascending order. That's from smallest to biggest. Clearly, you can't just sort them normally. You have to use the algorithm to get the marks in the exam. OK, here is the algorithm, the bubble sort algorithm. It says if there is only one number then, uh, in the list, then stop. Make a pass down the list, comparing each item with the one beneath it, and swap as necessary. If no swap occur occurs, stop. Otherwise, ignore the final item in the list and go to 1. OK, I'm going to show you how the bubble sort algorithm works. And I'm going to do an example for you. And afterwards, I'm going to show you a way of actually writing it neatly in the exam. A nice, easy way so that uh, you don't make mistakes and you can count everything you need to count for this algorithm. But firstly, just want to show you what the bubble sort is actually achieving. OK, so sort the uh, numbers 7, 5, 2, 4, 10, 1, 6 and 3 into, in ascending order. So I'm going to write the numbers 7, 5, 2, 4, 10, 1, 6, 3 uh, vertically down the page as they come in the uh, example. OK, then what I'm going to do, I'm going to look at my algorithm and say if there is one num number in the list, then stop. I've done that bit. There is more than one number, so I can't stop. It says make a pass down the list, comparing each item with the item beneath it, swapping as necessary. So, what I'm going to do, so that I've got my original list, I'm going to copy uh, the list one more time and I'm going to write it, uh, I'm going to have it here beside the one I've already got. So, here's my original list, so I'm just going to write original and pass one, I'm going to do exactly what it tells me. I'm going to make one pass down the list, comparing each item with the one beneath it, swapping as necessary. OK. I'm comparing 7 and 5. 5 is smaller than 7, so it needs to go to the top if these are going to be arranged in alphabetical order. Now I compare the 7 with the 2. Again, 2 is smaller, so we need to do a swap here. Swap the 2 and the 7. OK, 7 and the 4. Again, I'm going to need to swap. The 4 is going to have to go up, and the 7 is going to have to go uh, down. Will I have to swap uh, the 7 and the 10? No. 7 is smaller than 10, they're in the correct order. Have a look next. Comparing the 10 and the 1, I bet I had swap here. And compare the 6 and the 10, again, need to do a swap. And compare the 10 and the 3, again, need to do a swap. You'll notice after the first pass, what actually happens is the biggest number ends up going to the bottom of the list. I know that's the biggest number now. It always pushes the biggest to the bottom. There will be, in the next pass, no need to check um, whatever's second, last and last because I know 10 is, is always going to be the biggest after that pass. OK, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to... Has no swap occurred? No, so I need to keep going. Um, otherwise, ignore the final item in the list and go to 1 again. So I'm going to do this all again. So, now I'm going to do my next. Uh, so, pass 2. Compare each item in the list with the one directly below it. Compare the 5 and the 2, better swap. The 2 is smaller than the 5. Compare the, compare the 5 and the 4, better swap. 4 is smaller than the 5. Compare the 5 and the 7, no need to swap. It's fine as it is. Compare the 7 and the 1, 
Well, 1 is smaller than 7, so better swap. Compare the 7 and the 6. Well, 6 is smaller than 7, so better swap. And compare the 7 and the 3. The 3 is smaller than the 7, so better swap. Do notice here there is no need now to compare um, the 7 and the 10. You know the way the bubble sort works, it pushes the smallest to uh, the biggest to the bottom. There is no need to compare the 7 and the 10 um, because 10 must be bigger than 7 because it's at the bottom of the pass, of the first pass. Okay, we haven't not had no swaps, um, so we need to do another pass. So let's have a go at another pass here. I'm going to copy these items over here and let's do another pass. So let's call this pass 3. Compare 2 and 4, no need to swap, they're fine. 4 and 5, no need to swap, they're fine. 5 and 1, well 1 is smaller than 5, so better had swap. 5 and 6, no need to swap, they're fine. 6 and 3, well 3 is smaller than 6, so better had swap. Do bear in mind here, there's now no need to compare the 6 and the 7 because you know the 7 was the second largest number. So I'm going to stop at that point there. Okay, um, I've had to make some swaps, so I'm going to have to keep going because 3 tells us only stop when no swaps occur. So let's go one another time, let's see what we get. Okay, let's have a go at doing pass 4. 2 and 4, compare, no need to swap. 1 and 4, better had swap. 1 is smaller than 4, so swap them. 4 and 5, no need to swap, they're in the right order. 5 and 3, better had swap. The 3 is smaller than the 5, and we can stop there. We can stop there because we know that the 6 was already the third, uh, third biggest, so we're fine as it is. Okay. Uh, let's keep going. We have had to make a swap, so let's keep going. Let's do another one. Compare the 2 and the 1. Better had to make a swap because 1 is smaller than 2. Compare the 2 and the 4. No need to make a swap. Compare the 4 and the 3. 3 is smaller than 4. Better had to make a swap. Okay, now... Um, That was pass 5. I had to make a swap there, so I have to keep going with the algorithm. I know they look already in order, but the algorithm says only stop when no swap occurs. So at this point now, I'm going to go through them one last time. I'm going to do my sixth pass. Pass 6. Remember, all I've got to go is I've only got I've got to stop at this point here. Compare one and two, no need to swap. Compare two and three, no need to swap. So I'm absolutely done here. This was the final uh, one for me to do here, and hence in six uh, passes I've arranged these uh, using the algorithm properly here, um, and they are in ascending order. Now. A couple of things to mention here, a couple of things to point out to you. If I wanted to count as I went along the number of comparisons I made, the number of comparisons and swaps, how would I do it? Well, comparisons is how, how I have to compare the numbers, how many times I have to compare numbers. When there was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight numbers, I compared these two, one, these two, two, these two three, these two four, these two five, these two six, and these two seven. So I always have to do one comparison less than the number of numbers I need to compare. So I had to compare eight numbers here, so seven comparisons. Here I only had to compare um, seven numbers, so I had six comparisons. Here I had to compare five numbers, so five, com uh, sorry, four, six numbers. So five comparisons, and and so it went on as you went down. 
three, and the last one I just had to make two comparisons because I had three numbers. Now the question is, as I went along, uh, did I count the swaps? Well, I didn't actually count the swaps uh, in each pass I did. Is there a way to count them easily? Well, actually, it turns out there is a way. If you lay them out nice and neatly like this, then you can count the swaps uh, by noting when there is a diagonal line between two columns. For example, uh, 5 to 5, there's a diagonal. There must have been a swap. That 5 must have gone up. This 2 must have gone up. This 4 must have gone up. None here. This 1 must have gone up. This 6 must have gone up. And that 3 must have gone up. There was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 swaps in total there. And I could do the same as I go along. So it's a nice quick way of, of counting the swaps. There's a diagonal here. 1 swap, 2 swaps, 3 swaps, 4 swaps, 5 swaps. Uh, no, no, one swap and two swaps. So there was two swaps here. Um, here, no, one and two. There was another two here. One and two. There was another two here. And the last one, there was no swap. So in total, how many comparisons? Well, let's count them up. Six and seven is 13. Add 8 is 15, add 4 is 22, add 3 is 25, add 2 is 27 comparisons. How many swaps? 6 and 5 is 11, add 2 is 13, add 2 is 15, add 2 is 17. There were 17 swaps. So that many comparisons, that many swaps. It's a nice, easy way of counting comparisons and swaps. Now, one last problem with this bubble sort that I've shown you. Um, I was copying um, uh, columns as I went along and I was moving numbers around. Now clearly in an exam you can't be rubbing out things and adjusting them once you write them. You need a way of writing these properly. So I'm going to do the exact same example again and I'm going to show you a way to write it in the exam quickly and efficiently. Okay, let's do the exact same question again. Um, arranging these in ascending order using the bubble saw. Now the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to write the list down um, uh, vertically as I did before and I'm going to call them my original list. Okay, then I'm going to do pass one. Can I swap seven and five? Yes. So write five and then think about seven there. So I'm comparing seven and two. Should I swap? Yes. Put the two down. Now the seven's here. Can I swap 7 and 4? Yes, put the 4 down, think of the 7's there. S comparing 7 and 10, 7 smaller, leave it where it is, think of 10 here. Comparing 10 and 1, can I swap? Yes, put the 1 there, think of the 10 is here. Compare 10 and 6, I need to swap, Com uh, think of the 10 there. Compare 10 and 3, need to swap, put the 3 there, and finally the 10 there. Okay, that's how you do a pass without having to rub things out, etc. So, let's do pass two similarly. Compare the five and the two. The two needs to go there. Think of the five as here. Compare five and four. The four needs to go there. Think of the five here. Compare the five and the seven. Five's in the right place. Think of the seven as here. Compare the seven and the one. The one should go there and think of the seven as here. Compare the 7 and the 6. Need a swap. Put the 6 there. Think of the 7 here. Compare the 7 and the 3. Need a swap. Put the 3 there. And put the 7 there. Now you know these are the two biggest numbers they've been put at the bottom. Let's keep going. Pass 3. 2 and 4. Do I need to swap? No. Keep the 2. 4 and 5. Do I need to swap? No. Keep the 4. 5 and 1. Do I need to swap? Yes. Put the 1 there. Think of a 5 here. 5 and 6, so I need to swap. No, put the 5 down. 6 here, think of a 6 and compared to the 3, do I need to swap? Yes, put the 3 there and the 6 there. Put my line above it now. And that's pass 3 completed. Let's go for pass 4. Compare the 2 and the 4, no need to swap. Compare the 4 and the 1, 
Put the 1 there, think of the 4 there. Compare the 4 and the 5, no need to swap, put the 4 there. Compare the 4 and the, th uh, sorry, uh, the 5 should be here. Compare the 5 and the 3, put the 3 there, and the 5 uh, needs to go underneath and swap. And then draw your line above it. So that would be 6, 7, and 10. Done past 4. Let's go for past 5 now. Compare the 2 and the 1. Do need to swap. Put the 1 there. Think of the 2 here. 2 with 4 comparing. It's fine as it is. 4 here. 4 with 3 needs a swap. Put the 3 there. And the 4 must go underneath it. Put your line above it. No need to compare below because I know they're the biggest. And last one, past six, I know they're in order, but I can only stop the algorithm when I have never had to make a, uh, a swap on the previous pass. So past six, one and two, no need. So put my one there. Think two and three, no need. So put my two and my three there. Four, five, six, seven, and ten. In six passes, I've got there. Again, just out of interest, how am I going to count these things? Let me just show you how to count it one last time. I know it's the same example as before, but I'll just show you a nice, easy way of counting it. Right, how many comparisons? I'm going to count up my comparisons I had to make and how many swaps as well. How many comparisons and swaps. Now remember, when I had eight items in the list, in the first pass, I have to make seven comparisons then I only need six, then I only need five, then I only need four, then I only need three, and then I only needed two in the last one. How many swaps? Best way to count swaps is a method I told you when there's a diagonal similarity. One, two, three, four, and five. Five swaps. One, two, three, four, five. Five swaps. Um, one, two, two swaps, one, two, two swaps, one, two, two swaps, and no swaps for the last one. So counting those up, how many comparisons? 7 and 6 is 13, add 5 is 18, add 4 is 22, add 3 is 25, add 2 is 27, and swaps... Five and six, uh, five and five is ten. Add two is twelve. Add two is fourteen. Add two is sixteen. Let me just count that one last time. Sorry, five, two, three, four, five. Sorry, there was six on the first there. I missed that one. There was actually six. So six and five is eleven. Add two is thirteen. Add two is fifteen. Add two is seventeen. So there were twenty-seven comparisons and 17 swaps. Hence the bubble sort algorithm. I've got two questions for you on the next page. I've laid out the vertical table for you. No need for a table if you're writing it in the exam, but I've laid it out for you. You can use that format to help you, guide you. Sort the following two lists into ascending order using the bubble sort. Pause the video for te and I will stop in 10 seconds, then I will show you the answers. Here you go. Just before I show you the answers, make sure you take some time to work out the total comparisons on each pass and in total, and the total exchanges uh, on each pass and in total. I will show you the answers in five seconds. Okay, here are the answers just to finish with. Um, I got in total then... I got the first question took me nine passes to get there, 45 comparisons, 37 exchanges. The second question only took me seven passes with 42 comparisons and 25 exchanges. Make sure you work through those examples, understand them and have a nice neat way of writing these answers out in the exam as well as being able to count comparisons and exchanges. Thank you for listening. I hope you found that useful.